So in the last video, I introduced the course. And what I wanted to do in this video was take you through the resources that we're going to be using and get you started on week one, explain to you what I'm looking for in the first assignment and, and so on. Okay, so right off the bat, I want to talk to you about this wiki. So if you haven't worked with wikis before, uh, maybe in other courses you've used this wiki or you've used wikis in general, but wikis are often used by open source projects. And so we're going to use uh, a wiki to do uh, to do all of the things in this course. I'm not going to use Blackboard for very much because I want to try and use the tools of open source in order to uh, do the work that we're going to do together. I want to get you used to working in tools like wikis and so on. So this is the CDOT wiki. Uh, CDOT is the Center for Development of Open Technology, and it is the hub of all of the open source work, research, coursework, etc. that we do at Seneca. On the left hand side are all the different courses, and if you're taking DPS 909 or OSD 600, you can find the link. So DPS 909, OSD 600, they're both, they're both here. Um, so let me say something about how I'm going to I'm going to do each week's uh, material, how we're going to get together, as it were. So the first thing is I'm talking to you in a YouTube video right now. Uh, we're not doing this live. Why not? So I'm going to adopt one of the things that's really big in the open source world, and that is working asynchronously. So in the open source world, people are spread all over the globe. It's not uncommon for you to work with someone who's in a totally different time zone. And when you're getting up in the morning, they're going to bed. So the idea that you're going to schedule meetings where everybody has to attend or um, you're going to have this common approach, it works well if you are in a company and everybody is on the clock, but it doesn't work well in an open source context. So for our course, what I'm going to do, we're in an interesting time right now with COVID everybody's uh, at home. I assume that some of you are spread around the globe too. I don't know where everybody is. I'd actually be interested to know. And I wanna make it as easy for you to participate in this course as possible. I've talked to students in other courses over the summer I was teaching and in the winter. And what I heard is that lots of people have little kids at home. Some people have internet that goes up and down or they don't have access to devices all the time that they need to or they're in an environment where they have to share with siblings or partners or whoever it is. So I want to make sure that it's really easy for you to do this on your own time. So I'm going to each week, I'm going to post all of the materials for the week and I'll show you in a minute where that's going to be. And I'll put YouTube videos up, I'll put up readings, I'll put up documents, links to things, all of the stuff that I want you to work on. What we're going to do for our synchronous communication is we're going to use Slack. So I have an open source Slack set up. And if you've never worked with Slack before, this is a chance for you to get some experience using a, another tool. I could do this in Microsoft Teams or in one of the other common um, teaching and learning tools, but I'm going to use the Slack because it's commonly used by a lot of open source projects. And so it's another chance for you to use a tool that you're going to find commonly in use in many open source projects. As you can see, there's lots of people in the Slack. Like right now in here, there's 304 people. So lots of people that you can talk to, former students, lots of people who took this course a long time ago and they're still active. They're still working on open source. Um, so it's it's a great place for us to be able to talk, um, talk with each other. So I'll come back to this in a second. So we've got the wiki, we have Slack, and those um, are gonna be you know, really important parts of how we're gonna organize the work that we're gonna do. So um, let me take you through the pages that you need to know about. So on both the DPS 909 and OSD 600 pages, if you scroll down to the bottom, there is a link to the Slack and there is also a link to a page with all of the course notes. So if you click on the course notes page, it's gonna take you to this page right here. And what I'm gonna do is each week, I'm gonna add a link to a new page. So week one, the notes are already up or they're mostly up. I'm still editing them as I do these videos. And as, as soon as I post this video and the last one on YouTube, I'll put links to them in here. So each week, what I'll do is I'll give you a set of videos that I make or videos that I want you to watch as well as readings. 
um, blogs that I want you to read or documentation that I want you to read, things that I want you to be aware of. So I want you to make some time to go through and read this material. Sometimes it'll be chapters in a book, all different things. Below that, I have a list of questions. These are things that I'd like you to think about as you're doing the readings. So this week we're talking about copyright, we're talking about um, blogging, we're getting used to working with Slack and so on. So I want you to think about these questions as you're doing the readings. Try and come up with answers for yourself as you're going through them. The most important thing I'm going to give you each week is a list of to-dos. And so I'm going to expect you to do a lot of work. So this is a heavy course. This is a project-based course. Uh, and you need to be doing things. So every week you have a lot of uh, tasks that you have to accomplish. So let me go through and talk to you about the tasks that I have for you this week. So your first task is, as I say, do these readings. Second task is I want you to join the Slack. And you can join the Slack using your um, using your My Seneca email address. You'll be able to create an account and log in that way. If you have any trouble getting on, you can email me and I'll help you figure that out. So when you get on there, introduce yourself. Tell us, say hi, I'm Humph D on, on Slack and I'd be interested to chat with you. So just come by and say hello. The next thing that I want you to do is I want you to start working on getting your blog set up. So I have a page where I talk about what I'd like you to do in terms of creating a blog. So before this Friday, I'd like you to set up a blog for yourself. I don't care which blogging platform you use. You can use WordPress, Blogger, Medium, DevTO, or something else. All of these are free. You don't have to spend any money on them. And I want you to create a blog and get it set up so that you can start writing about the work that you're going to be doing. Blogging is going to be a critical part of the work that we do because it's going to allow us to talk to each other without all being in the same class or all being there at the same time. We can write about things in a little bit longer form than we would on Slack and keep people up to date on the work that we're doing. So as part of this, I also want you to do some explorations on GitHub. I want you to create a GitHub account for yourself. I want you to take a look at the trending repositories. As I said in my earlier video, part of what we're going to be doing over the, over the next few weeks is I want to get you thinking about the kinds of projects that you want to contribute to. And one of the ways to do that is to make yourself aware of the projects that even exist. There's all kinds of opportunities to get involved in things um, on GitHub. Lots of them you've never even thought about. So there's the things you would expect, but there's lots and lots of surprising projects that might interest you. So I want you to write your first blog post, and I've given you a bunch of information of the kinds of things that I'd like you to include in your first blog post. Uh, I want you to create an account on this wiki. So you're going to need, in order to hand things in in this course, you're going to have to edit the wiki and you're going to have to put information in here. So right now I'm logged in on the wiki and you're going to have to create an account. Creating an account on this wiki takes a little bit of time because it has to be, your, your request has to be approved by an administrator. So I'd like you to do that sometime early in the week and it'll, it'll take a few days probably for that to happen. Once that does happen, you'll be able to come down here and you can see there's an edit button next to all of these sections. If I click on edit, I'm going to be able to go in here and enter my information, just like the example that we have above. So again, with this wiki, everything in here is editable. I want you to feel like this is your wiki. So if you notice a typo or a mistake, go ahead and correct it. Or if you think something is unclear or you want to correct a link or, I mean, I'd like you to get involved and help me to make this documentation the best it can be. So in some ways, this course is an open source project too. The only thing that I would ask that you not edit are the due dates. <laughs> so please don't go in and change these to something else. But And don't change, um, be careful that you don't, when you're editing things, you don't delete um, entries from other students. But otherwise, um, you, can, you can get involved in making changes. The last thing that you're going to do to hand your work in is you're going to get your blog registered into our blogging planet. So we have this telescope project that I was telling you about. And what telescope does is it takes all the blogs of everybody who's working on open source at Seneca and it aggregates them together into one page. So it's a really easy way for us to keep track of the work that people are doing. 
and you can scroll through and you can read about everybody's work and you can find links to it and it's it's great it's a great project that way so this is what my blog looks like if i go to my blog it's meant to be read this way however in order to get this blog to be connected into the blog planet our telescope system you need to find the feed the rss feed that goes with your blog Depending on the system that you're using, you have to change the URL so that it gives you an RSS or an Atom feed. An RSS feed is an XML feed of just the content of a blog without all of, it's not meant for visual, it's meant to be plugged into a backend. So everybody's blog who, everyone who has a blog on our telescope system has registered their feed. And the way that you do this, uh, let me go back here, is you're going to go and add your feed to the planet feed list. I'll just show you what that looks like. So this page has information on how to do this. And basically you need to create a line that looks like, looks like one of these. So it's going to have a link, not to your blog, but to your feed. So you can see feed, feeds, etc. So this is your RSS feed and also your name as you'd like it to appear in the system. If you do that, if you edit this and put it in there, then your blog will automatically get picked up by the telescope system and it will, it will show up here for everyone in the course. They'll be able to see it, including me. Okay, so have a read through this and get your blog set up. The Next thing that I want you to do is I want you to start working on your first assignment release. So I want to talk to you about what this is going to be. Now, normally with the releases, I'm going to let each of you work on whatever you want. I'm going to let you do any open source project on GitHub, you can contribute to it. So one person can be working on a database and somebody else could be working on a game engine. Somebody else could be working on translating um, technical documentation from Vietnamese into English. There's so many things you could be working on. For this first assignment though, I'm gonna give you all a common task. I want every one of you to create an open source project from scratch. And I've given you a challenge. So the due date for this is Friday, September 25th. And what I want you to do is I want you to build a command line tool for finding broken links in a text document, like an HTML file. So the way that this would work is if I was creating a website and I wanted to have a command line tool where I could type the name of your tool, type the name of my file, and it would automatically check if any of the URLs, HTTP, HTTPS URLs that I have in that file, do they work? Or do they, they return a 404 or a 500 error? Does the DNS resolve, etc.? So what I want you to do is I want you to pick a programming language. I don't care what you program this in. You could program this in any programming language that you want. So you could pick a programming language that you love. Maybe you love Java and you really want to work with Java more. Maybe you've always wanted to learn Python and you've never had a chance. Maybe you want to pick a language that you've you know, only heard about and you want to play with it a little bit. It doesn't matter to me. You pick what would be um, interesting for you. And what I want you to do is I want you to implement everything that you see in the implement all requirements section. So these are all of the features that I need your program to do, okay? After you've done that, I want you to pick two items from the list of optional features. So go through this list and find something else in here that you think is interesting. I've also put in um, a section in here where you could come up with your own idea. So if you have an idea for something you'd like to do and it's not in this list, just talk to me on Slack and say, hey Dave, is this okay if I add feature XYZ? And I'll talk to you about it. Probably it's okay. I'm happy for you to experiment here if you have an idea for what you want to do. So when you're working on this code, you are not alone. You can come and talk to your colleagues on Slack. Everybody is working on the same problem. You can do research on the internet. You can talk to each other. You can write about it in your blog. You can. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to hand in anyone else's work. So collaboration is not the same as having somebody do write the code for you and then hand that in. But if you want to sit down with some friends and say, how are you going to tackle this problem? 
and one of you goes and implements that in Python and somebody else implements that in Node.js, that's, that's okay. That's something that you, you can do. So I want you to try and get some experience um, working with GitHub, writing some, writing some real code, uh, and we're gonna use this project as we go forward in the course. So one of the reasons I want you to create a, a repository and create a project like this is that I want you to have a piece of code that we can use in subsequent weeks because I wanna teach you a whole bunch of skills about Git, about automation, about open source workflows. And it's gonna be easier if you have a piece of code that you own, something that you've worked on and you can use it as an example for what you're gonna do. You hand it in the same way that you hand in the blog. You're going to um, edit the wiki and you're gonna fill out the information for your project here. So it's gonna be a link to a link to your GitHub. Let me go down here. A link to your GitHub repo where the code lives. It's gonna be a blog post explaining how your code works, etc. I have details above the language that you wrote it in, etc. So Hopefully this is gonna be kind of a fun project for you and it might challenge you in ways that you haven't worked before, but it's an example of writing a tool that's very common in open source where I need to be able to analyze something and automate a process like finding dead links in order to make something work. The last to-do item I have for you is to get started collaborating on Slack. So I. I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to not go um, offline, work on things and never talk to anybody and then at the end just hand things in. That's not gonna work in this course. In this course, we're gonna do our best work if we, if we get involved with each other in the work that we're doing. If we get help, even if you don't need help, you might be able to help other people. So if you've started to figure out an algorithm or a way of making something happen, Maybe some student in the course is struggling because they're working in Python and they don't know how to process command line arguments. And maybe you've solved that problem. Well, there's a chance for you to give somebody some help. Later on, when you need help, somebody else is gonna do the same for you. So I want you to get used to that idea of working in community, working in the open, talking with people about the work that you're doing. And it's gonna take some courage. You're gonna to have to be brave to do what I'm talking about here because um, you know, all of us are going to have things that we're learning, whether it's a new language or learning to use Git for the first time, etc. Now, you'll notice that I'm throwing you into Git without teaching it. And there are different ways of, of working with Git. One would be for me to sit down and do eight weeks of lectures before you ever touch it. And to be honest, I don't think that's valuable. In my experience, the more valuable way for us to do this is for me to throw you into the deep end ask you to do some work with Git and GitHub, knowing that you're gonna get some things wrong and it's not gonna be 100% clear. And then starting in a couple of weeks, what I'll do is I'll start teaching you a lot about the internals of Git and I'll take you through all of the different commands that you need to know. By that time, you'll have some experience working with Git and you'll have some questions and some things that you're starting to wonder about. And I think I'll be able to fill in some of the gaps, some of the things that you haven't been able to figure out on your own. Okay, so if any of this is unclear, um, come talk to me. You can talk to me on Slack and you can email me and you can ask me your questions. You can obviously watch this video multiple times if you miss something that I said. And if anything needs clarification, if the wiki and so on isn't clear, you can update it or you can ask me to do that. So dive into the to-do items. Start blogging, start getting involved in Slack and start working on your dead link checker. I'm really interested to see which languages you'll pick. I'm interested to see what you're gonna call your project and to see how you're gonna tackle some of the things that this has to do. Okay, have lots of fun this week.